Okay, welcome back. This is Molar Mass number three. So this is the third video in the series uh, that began with a discussion about the basic definition of molar mass and that was related to the mass of a dozen nails. The second video covered starting with the mass of a particular atom, calculating the total number of atoms possible using molar mass and Avogadro's number, or um, which is the concept that one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So in video number three, what we're going to do is turn the process around backwards. And what we want to discuss now is going from a collection of atoms of a particular type, um, any of the atoms that are on the per periodic table, um, the first example that we'll deal with today in terms of atoms will be carbon and the second example will be with nitrogen. But at first we're going to focus once again on nails because I believe this is an analogy or it is an example that's easier to understand than, than dealing with atoms which in general are invisible except when they're clustered together in, in large numbers. So to remind you in the very first video, we discovered that 114.5 grams of nails is the mass associated with one dozen of those nails or 12 of those nails. We combine those two pieces of information into a relationship that allows us to count nails without actually having to count them. Similarly, for chemicals, this particular concept is called molar mass where the units will be the particular mass of a given element per mole of that element where the idea of a mole is analogous to the idea of a dozen. A dozen is 12. A mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd and as I stated in the previous uh, videos the reason why the mole 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd has to be such a large number is because very small amounts of atoms, molecules, or compounds have extraordinarily enormous numbers of particles. And so we need a number that is suitably large enough that will allow us to count those atoms, molecules, or compounds without actually having to count them. So we can't use we can't use a simple number like a dozen in order to do that. So the challenge in this video will be to learn how to determine the mass of a particular element given the total number of particles. So to start that discussion in example number one, before we deal with atoms and, uh, and the mass of atoms, what we'll do instead is we'll calculate the mass of 612 nails. To do that, we're going to need uh, two kinds of relationships. The first is recognizing that one dozen nails is equal to 12 nails. So we're taking and combining the total number of nails with a term we used to describe that total number. One dozen is equal to 12. The second thing that we have to do is combine that with the concept that 114.5 grams of 16 penny nails is equal to a dozen. So I, I'll draw your attention down the sheet a bit here. We're going to use unit multiplier method which I introduced in the last video and so in order to do the calculation we always begin by bringing down the information that we're given in the problem. So in this case, we're told we have 612 nails to start with. Both calculations you see here on the sheet are identical. In the top one, what I've done is I've combined the unit multiplier method into one efficient stream of ratios. In the second one, I've broken it down out into steps. We're going to focus on this calculation here in the middle of the page because we're beginners and we need to see how the steps work. So we begin with 612 nails over 1 and we're going to multiply that times another fraction 
the fraction that we're going to multiply that against is the relationship that we understand to be where one dozen is equal to 12 nails. So I'm going to write that down. One dozen is equal to 12 nails. So this relationship right here is where we got this ratio right here. And when we, when we use this in the equation, we arrange the numerator and the denominator, the top and the bottom of the fraction, with the idea of canceling the units that we're starting the problem with here. So we were, we're beginning with 612 nails. And in the first step, what we're going to do is convert the nails to dozens. So we multiply 612 nails times one dozen over 12. Notice that, that the units cancel and we're left with 51 dozen nails. 51 dozen nails. That's essentially 612 divided by 12. Below this calculation, you see uh, I have the same calculation represented um, by a slightly different method. Both of these things are the same mathematically. They just represent a different form of the same thing. Some of you may uh, prefer the way I've done this first step uh, here on the bottom. In either case, uh, the system works. What's important for you to understand is how the units are canceling in this step. Unit multiplier method is extremely important to learn in terms of chemical calculations. So in the first step, we discover that there's 51 dozen nails. In the second step of the equation then, what we're going to do is convert from dozens of nails to mass of nails. And in order to do that, we need this relationship that we discovered way back in video number one. And that is to say that 114.5 grams of nails per, uh, per dozen, this is the mass of 12 16 penny nails. So we multiply 51 dozen directly by this ratio. Note that the 51 dozen is over one and the dozen cancels, the unit cancels, and we're left with 5,839.5 grams of total nails. The number makes sense because we're dealing with a, a lot of dozen, right? 51 dozen nails is a lot of nails. So the mass should be large. All right, so let's take a look and see how this works for atoms now. All right, so example number two. In this case, we're given 4.6 times 10 to the 26 atoms of carbon. 4.6 times 10 to the 26. This is a huge number of atoms, a huge number of atoms. All right, we're going to need two concepts to solve the problem. We have to know the molar mass of carbon, which is 12 grams of carbon per mole. And we need Avogadro's number, which in this video I am now using the abbreviation for this, capital N, capital sub A, which is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon per mole. So we're going to use these two unit multipliers, if you will, to solve the problem. So how do we begin? We start by writing down the number of atoms of carbon that we were given, which is shown here, and I put it over one uh, to, in, in, in order to make the form of this be consistent with the rest of the problem. So it's 4.6 times 10 to the 26 atoms of carbon over 1 times, all right, now in this first step what we're going to do is we're going to go from atoms to moles. So we need to use Avogadro's number, this relationship, which is in units of atoms divided by mole. So we need to use this in this step in order to facilitate the canceling of the atoms and solving for the mole, which is what you see happens here the way I have this set up. You need to use a calculator here that allows for the input of scientific notation. And I'm going to assume in this video that you know how to do that and that you're following along. You may not, and in that case, just try to follow along. In a subsequent video, I will give lessons about how to utilize scientific notation in um, a number of different calculators. Nevertheless, you see that when we divide 4.6 times 
times 10 to the 26 by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, we end up with 764 moles of carbon. So this would be step number one, going from the atoms to the moles of C. This is the last step, so first step number one and step number two. In the second step, what we're going to need to do is convert from moles of carbon to mass of carbon. And for that, we need the molar mass of the element. So we're going to multiply 76 moles of carbon directly by the molar mass, which is 12 grams divided by mole. And we see that the moles cancel out. And we were left with 9,168 grams of carbon as the answer. This is a very large mass of carbon, but it should be. Going back to the number of atoms we were given, 4.6 times 10 to the 26. 10 to the 26 is much larger than 10 to the 23rd. So, and we saw that here where we got out a significant number of moles. So we knew to expect a large mass of the carbon. All right, the last example uh, involves using a different type of element so that we just have practice with different numbers. In this case, we're given 1.2 times 10 to the 21st atoms of nitrogen. And we're going to convert that to mass of nitrogen. Now, to remind you, we need two things in order to solve this problem. We have to know the molar mass, which we look up on the periodic table. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to give that figure to you here. We're going to utilize 14 grams per mole for nitrogen. And then we also need Avogadro's number. And once again, Avogadro's number is analogous to this idea of a dozen is 12. But for atoms, we can't use numbers that small. So in this case, we're using the idea that one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And that indeed is Avogadro's number. So in order to do this calculation, like in the last case, we start by writing down what we were given. And we are starting with 1.2 times 10 to the 21st atoms of nitrogen. In the first step, we need to go from atoms to moles. So we're going to use Avogadro's number. And the reason why, I know that sometimes students get confused. They're like, how do we choose what, what happens in the first step? So in order to answer that question, what you need to do is compare what you're starting with with the units that you need to end up at in the first step. And we need to go from atoms to mole. The only two unit multiplier, out of the two unit multipliers here, Avogadro's number is the only one that's got both of those units within the quantity, atoms and mole. Whereas molar mass has got grams per mole. So we don't want this one for the first step, we need this one. So what we're going to do is multiply this term, 1.2 times 10 to the 21st atoms of nitrogen over 1 times, we're going to use Avogadro's number, but we need to invert the ratio. So we're multiplying by 1 mole of nitrogen over 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of nitrogen. Notice that the atoms of nitrogen cancel out. And we've solved for moles. We're getting a pretty small amount of moles of N, 0 0.002 moles of N. Ask yourself, does this make sense? Yes, because the number of atoms we were given in the beginning of the problem, 10 to the 21st, is significantly smaller than 10 to the 23rd. So we expect a small number of moles of N, a small fraction of this number, a small fraction of this number. So we're, we're halfway home. All right, we know the, num the moles of nitrogen, so we bring that down to a new step. And we now need to convert from moles of N to mass of N. And in order to accomplish that, this will be over 1, we're going to multiply the moles of N times the molar mass. The ratio is already in the right configuration because it's grams over mole. And we see that our moles are going to cancel out and that we've actually solved for the grams. And when you run the numbers, you get 0.03 grams, which is a small amount of nitrogen in terms of mass. But don't forget, we started out with a small number of atoms by comparison uh, to Avogadro's number, which is 10 to the 23rd, and we started with 10 to the 21st. So you expect the mass of nitrogen that we get out of this problem to be a relatively small number.